So what I have planned for this tutorial is to show you how to make smaller objects or more simple objects that are already available in Blender and are done quickly to somehow complete your scene. One of the things we are going to do is inserting text. The second thing is doing a quick spiral. Then I would like to show you how to do a honeycomb pattern. We are going to do errors because errors are actually quite important, especially if you would like to show a reaction scheme. And we are going to do a couple of simple gears. Gears are quite often used when it comes to showing multi um, component reaction schemes. So quite often if uh, if you have, for example, a cascade for those kind of reactions. And they are super easy to do in Blender because there is actually already a mesh for that. So let's start with text first. I'm going to stay with the Blender scene that I had before for most of my tutorials. By hitting Alt A, I'm going to open the Add menu and then there is a, a subsection which is called text. And as soon as I click on it, the text is going to appear on that side. If you would like to change the writing, basically, you just enter the edit mode by hitting tab and then you can delete the text that was there before and write something new. I'm going to stay with text because that's fine for me. By leaving uh, the edit mode, you enter the object mode again and you can do the rotation on the text. So I'm going to grab one of the axes, hit R and then type 90 and the text is basically upright. When you have text seen in your present, there is a new menu available for you as well, which is uh, everything related to the lettering. So if you click on that, you see that you have the options uh, like bevel and geometry here. In the geometry section, extrude is actually quite handy because here you can make um, your text 3D. So that would be the same thing as we had before with our molecule. Um, but in this case, it's on a text and it's predefined. What you might recognize here as well is that the shading here is a bit weird. That can be fixed with our almighty edge split modifier. Um, that is very helpful and can be applied to nearly everything. Then um, you can also change the font. Unfortunately, you always have to uh, find the location for the font that you would like to use. So you just click on the font menu here, then you navigate to the space where you store the font. And then the font is appearing in the Blender file. Unfortunately, that is not, that connection is basically saved only for your file, but the connection is not saved for uh, Blender in general. Of course, you can apply everything to the font that you would do to a normal object. That means we can give it a new material. I'm going to go for something blue. And also uh, play with the roughness, play with the glossiness, play with reflection. Everything you do to a normal app, uh, object can be done to the font as well. I'm going to enlarge the text a bit, put it on the floor and put it in the corner because I would like to do the next object now. Of course, you can re-enter uh, and type the new text by just hitting tab again to enter the edit mode uh, and by hitting tab the second time, you just leave it and enter the object mode. The second thing that I would like to show you is how to quickly do a spiral. Until now, we mainly dealt with meshes. Now we are going to insert a curve. The curve that we are looking for is in the subsection curve profiles and here is 3D helix. In case these options do not show up, um, it might be that you have to go into the preferences again. So hit edit and preferences and add ons. And uh, it can be that you need to activate the curve, um, the additional and curve options. So we are going to sort through that by just uh, activating add curve. And here you see what I basically activated. I have the extra objects uh, activated. Those are two things that we are not going to discuss and simple curve plus is also activated. So in case you do not see um, the 3D helix, um, check back and see if the extra objects are activated. 
So I'm going to go back into Curve Profiles and Helix 3D. And then you see there is um, a 360 turn of a Helix appearing. And the tiny menu over there allows you to make uh, changes to that Helix. Also make sure that as soon as you leave that um, menu, you cannot go back. So try to think uh, in advance what you would like to achieve or how your Helix should look like. You can define the start and the end angle. So let's say if I would like to have three turns, then I can just type times three and my new helix is going to be calculated. What you also see here that the resolution of the helix is not really smooth and that can be just changed in the resolution menu. I'm going to add uh, enter a value of 500, which is normally fine. My helix in this case should be a bit more stretched. That means the height and the width can be changed. I'm going to change the height to five. And let's see how that looks like. That looks something like that looks perfectly fine for me. So I like the way the helix looks like. That means I'm going to leave the edit mode again and do some modification on the helix. Of course, now it's just a path. So there is no body to the helix. As soon as you have a path here, you also get the special uh, menu over there. So if you enter that, it looks very familiar to everything else that you have. There is geometry and bevel. If you enter or if you change the value in the extrude menu, you will get something like a sheet that is following the path. And if you change the bevel menu, you would get something like a tube, which is, I think, most of the, ca uh, the cases which is, I think, most of the time quite helpful. If you, I'm going to just scale that down so that we see what's happening, what's happening on the top of the helix. So and zoom in. You also see that the smoothness can be controlled with those uh, values as well. So you can change the value of the resolution here and uh, crank it up a bit and then the helix looks way smoother. If you have a bevel uh, applied, you can also apply the solidify modifier, which of course gives your um, tube a bit of a body as well. And you guessed it probably already, an edge split to have a nice flat edge here. As always, you can apply whatever material you would like to have to that helix. It also works with glass and so on and so forth. So no limitations here as well. I am going to go for um, a principal shader as before, and I'm just going to give it a different, a lighter blue. And I'm also going to move it to the side so we have more space for other objects as well. The next object that I would like to show you, which is also quite, um, probably not something you would like to use a lot, but I think it serves uh, as a good decoration for some uh, scenes. And this is um, a honeycomb pattern. If you enter the add uh, menu by hitting shift and A again, there are some um, special, um, there, there are some special menus that I did not mention yet. And again, if you don't see them, it is very likely that they are not activated in your properties. Again, go to edit, go to preferences. And then in this case, we choose add mesh. And I have a couple of them activated. The ones that you uh, need now is extra objects. And that's basically it. As soon as you activate it, you should have um, the extras available in the mesh menu. And here you see honeycomb. And if you activate this one, you see that there is a pattern of honeycombs. And uh, the only modification I'm going to do here is I'm going to add some extra rows. You can play around with the values a bit and uh, see what that basically does. And as again, if you leave the menu, you cannot do modifications anymore. Keep that in mind. Of course, you can do modifications uh, to the object, any kind of modifications that you would do to a normal object. In this case, also a modifier that gives um, you a body is solidify. So we can have uh, a pattern like this. I'm going to move it to the floor and to the back. And of course, you can also give it a material. I'm again going to stay with the default material and add a bit of color. 
And let's see what that looks like in the rendered mode. So that would be basically uh, a honeycomb pattern. So you might have some function for that. Of course, sometimes that actually works really nicely if you have uh, a top view, for example. So you can see that the shadows on and um, so the way the light basically lit the honeycomb scene looks actually quite fancy. So I'm going to leave it up to you to play with the honeycomb as well. The next object that we are going to do is an error and uh, conveniently there is also a predefined path for that available and it's in the curve profile again. There is arch and error and if you go to error, I'm just going to go to the solid mode again, you see a basic shape of an error appear and here you can do the modifications to the error as well. I'm also going to leave it up to you to play with um, those modifications. I'm just going to change the height to something like 2 and the width to something like 0 0.2. Oh, that's not. Let's go to 1. I wanted to go the other direction, right? Again, if you leave that menu, you cannot re enter it. But of course, you can do modifications by just selecting the single vertices. So if you would like to have a longer one, just select the vertices by clicking, keeping shift clicked, and then you have the second one. And by just dragging, you can get a longer error. Also, if you would like to do modifications to the error head, you basically, oops, I left that one out. You can basically do the same here as well. In the object mode, you can also, of course, uh, give that area a body. So all the geometry and bevel options are available for you as well. So if we do the extrude, it basically does the same thing as for the text uh, that we did before. And again, the edge split is something that's very helpful. I'm going to position my arrow a bit closer to the ground and I'm going to make it a bit smaller. And as for all of the other objects, materials can be assigned. And I'm also going to go for like a light blue in that case. Let's quickly pop into the rendered view. So this is, those are the assets we have so far. The only thing that's left now is the gears. And also this is not um, a overly, you don't need to do overly much. You enter the add menu again, mesh, and there is a function which is called gears, and you can choose between gear and worm. And we would like to have gear, and there is a standard gear appearing. I'm going to decrease the number of teeth to eight, so to have it a bit um, simpler. And then, of course, you can also change uh, different other volumes. I'm going to not go through all of them and I'm going to leave it up to you to play with them. But most of these values are um, quite easy to understand. Again, if you leave the menu, the gear is, stays as it is. Unfortunately, and this is a bit, um, uh, a bit um, nasty to deal with, you see that uh, the inside of the gear is open. It looks a bit weird if you go into the rendered mode because normally I would say that gears are normally something like solid. But this uh, is something we can fix and I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to enter the edit mode now and I'm going to select, um, I'm going to activate the edge selection and going to select one of the upper edges. And if you think back on how we constructed the round bottom flasks, if you had E again and then set, you can go down and we are going to do the same thing with E and Z and we go up and then select both of those um, circles with Alt and Shift and go to vertices and merge vertices by distance. And then by just, oops, that was a bit too much, by just um, increasing or decreasing the distance, both of those lines are basically merged. And if we go back into the solid view, you see now that we have a quite uh, smoothly closed inner part of the gear. Of course, you can change uh, the way the shading is. So you can go to smooth shading and keep in mind that edge split is actually your friend in that case. So I'm going to drag that down to bring it to the floor. 
So there would be a gear now. For whatever reason, and I don't know where it comes from, and to be honest, I don't know how to solve it quickly. When you do a duplication of your gear, that's what I did with uh, Shift and D now, you don't see, uh, you see that there is a second object appearing in the menu, but you cannot select it separately, except that if you do the transformation within the transform menu, so I'm just going to move that one now, as soon as it's separated, you can move it separately. Don't ask me why, but in case if you have that issue as well, just go into the transformation menu, select one of the gears and move it. And then of course we can align the gears in a way that they um, fit into each other. And as always, you can assign whatever material you like to that gear. I'm going for two darker colors now. So let's go for two dark blues. And let's pop into the rendered mode to see how all of our assets look like. So this is just a short collection and a small collection of assets that you can find in Blender already that you might want to use for your project. Of course, as you saw, the, especially the mesh menu contains a lot of different things. All of them are free. Most of the plugins that you saw are actually free. You can activate the, those things in the preferences. And I would recommend just playing with those kind of things as well. Um, and see what types of uh, objects you can use for your projects. I'm going to render that scene now and I'm going to come back when it's finished. And we are back again with the final image. Those are elements that you um, might want to incorporate into your scene. And uh, since they are readily available in Blender, it's worth giving them a shot if you need them. Good. See you in the next tutorial. Bye.